All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Game 3, the final game that I will be casting before I head out to Las Vegas, Nevada for IPL4 at the Cosmopolitan. If you guys get a chance, make sure you guys get your tickets. If you guys aren't going to be coming out, uh, it is pretty last minute, then make sure you guys tune into the stream. It will be going live on Friday at 10 a.m. And the links should be either twitch.tv or justin.tv forward slash IGN Pro League. I think I'll be there to kickstart the event. I'm very, very excited about it. So hopefully I'll see you guys there and let's go ahead and get into this game on the right hand side of the map we do have ogs old generations which is what the ogs stands for supernova as the red terran doing a fantastic job last game to to almost come back man uh i think the one mistake that he made in that entire game was going down to the south having his entire army down there and then leaving his main vulnerable to a massive counterattack. which of course lucira is a player who will go for the throat when he needs to go for the throat and he went for the throat right there and that was able to secure him the w now um lucira is the blue zerg over here on the left hand side cross spawn forced here on antigua and this should be a good one ladies and gentlemen strap yourselves in that last Last one was a 35 minute brawl on Tower Rim, one of the better TVZs I've seen in a while. Can't wait to see how this one's going to conclude out and who's going to advance forward. Supernova now is going to be opening up with the barracks at the front door. Very common opening that Terran players like to use in TVZ. Uh, this is usually what they do when they, you know, they'll wall it off, they'll get into the supply depot here. And uh, we'll see if he decides to go for a barracks into a, right away a command center. Uh, perhaps he could go into a barracks with gas into an expansion. He could also, uh, of course, go with barracks gas into the factory for the reactored Hellions as well. All of which are viable builds. We might even see some type of a Reaper opening as well. The, the, <laughs> the opening possibilities for Terran are quite endless in the early games. So uh, it could be pretty interesting to see what he does. Meanwhile, over on the left-hand side of the map, uh, it looks like we have... The Zerg player going for the natural expansion right away. Nothing too crazy there. And he should get a spawning pool down right about now as well. Nope, going to opt to go for the gas first before the pool to get a little bit of that earlier Vespine and get the quicker speed. And it uh, looks like we are going to have a gasless fast expansion from Supernova. So he is going to try to get that command center down right away and try to go into the macro game once again. And you know what? I have no complaints. I would love to see another brawl between these two juggernauts. Uh, you know, the last game I felt like was a bit fluky. I think, while I'm not trying to discredit uh, Lucira's win or anything like that, because that was fantastic play by him, I think it was just a tad fluky because both armies were going down south, and unfortunately for the Terran, Zerg is much faster than Terran are. Uh, so the Zerg was able to remobilize and send everything back to the north for the counterattack, and Supernova was like, oh, derp, 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 herp can't really do anything about that so he was kind of stuck down to the south and it was very unfortunate for the Terran to be in a situation like that we'll see what happens this time around wow double gas right away after the command center and I definitely have an answer for that guys I think Supernova is going to do the exact same thing he did in game two and game uh, in game one and he's going to follow up this fast expansion with a factory and a starport and go right into cloak banshees again uh, short of that, he might go for some type of double factory build with uh, Mass Blue Flame Hellion, perhaps even uh, Mass Orange Flame Hellion as well, which is a bit cheesy. Uh, I think the Mass Blue Flame Hellion build, if he does go for that, is much better because you can transition out of that, you can go into mech or something like that. Uh, but we'll see what happens. He might just go for the starport as I initially, as I, oops, sorry, as I initially guessed. Meanwhile, a Zergling also chasing an SCV in the middle of the map. That SCV will try to get in and get a scout off, but I don't know if it will because there's a queen there. And so, is this the first time Supernova has scouted? No, he is not. That's the second time. So he does know at least um, a little bit about the whereabouts of the Zerg and what he's up to. And now he's going to get that SCV in for the delayed scout, but doesn't see anything of consequence. And that is going to go down. Meanwhile, back inside the Terran main, yeah, Supernova is going to go for that starport. So he is going to go for the original opening that I thought he was and try to get some uh, Banshees out. Most likely going to invest in the Cloak once again. Let's see if he made the same. I thought it was an error in judgment or an error in gas um, accumulation rate that he saved up in the first game. In the first game, he only had enough gas for Cloak and one and uh, no Banshee, actually. He had to wait for the Banshee to come out. Uh, after Cloak had been started. So let's see if he has enough for both this time. He does not, 
but he is about to get 150, so that, or actually he only needs 100 for the Banshee, and there we go, so the Banshee does start. So that's the timing you really want. You want to start the Banshee as soon as Cloak starts, so you can have two Banshees out once Cloak is done. And uh, let's see what's going on at the Zerg Natural right now, as two Hellions try to make their way in, but that is not going to be successful, because there's already an Evolution Chamber there and a spine crawler, as well as plenty of Queen's Creep Spread is beginning quite early for uh, Lucira as well, I might add, which is never a bad thing. Layer is now beginning to uh, finish up as well. And uh, the layer timing from Lucier this time around, much faster, I feel like, than the previous game. I think he's going to be well equipped to deal with the cloaked Banshees. He, you know, he's faced off against them two times in a row already. So you'd think he would probably get some type of detection out there on the map to deal with the cloak uh, this time around, either in the form of Evolution Chamber or Overseers. And we do have the first Banshee out already. Second Banshee is on the way. Uh, the second Banshee seems to have been started no it was started on time so both banshees will be done um around the time cloak finishes and then he should send them in meanwhile these hellions going out across on the ground trying to distract the zerg and make the zerg think you know that there's going to be some type of ground attack you know invest heavily in ground defense but uh, i think lucira knows all about this ploy he's just going to try to kill off as many creep tumors as he can and he was able to kill off quite a bit as well so well done by supernova to just harass the zerg uh, you know, keep the Zerg on two bases for as long as possible, and it's just like deja vu all over again, although there is the Spire about to finish, and Lucira is about to have a ton of mutas out, he's banking up that, that Vespine gas, which is so important when you go for the muta build, you need to save up as much gas as possible, and I think he's going to have about nine mutas, maybe even ten ready to go, although the Banshees are making their way in. Now, the Banshee harass here has the potential to do a lot of damage before these mutas come out. In fact, I would estimate some Somewhere on the order of maybe 10 to 15 drones are going to go down here. Supernova makes his way in. He decides not to go for the Spire. Rather, he's going to go for drones and queens here. Has already killed off three, but his time is limited. There is an Overseer coming out. Yeah, the Overseer is already here. And Supernova not going to be able to do as much damage as you might think because he chased after the queen. Should have went right after drones, I think, rather than diddly daddling around. And now the Mutas have arrived. At the very least, those Cloak Banshees do scout and see the Spire and the Mutas coming out. So now he can get some proper anti-air defense back up in his home. But uh, yeah, Supernova's Cloak Banshees this time around really not doing much at all. Uh, remember, the investment was Quick Starport, the Double Banshee, and the Cloak Upgrade. Only killing off 10 drones, so not the most damage. However, these Hellions are going to look to make up for the damage that their flying brothers were unable to do. Or perhaps sisters, since there are girls driving the uh, Banshee, right? Um, so here comes those six Hellions, and let's see if what kind of damage you can do. They're already going to be able to roast up a couple of those drones. Meanwhile, Mutas are inside the Terran main, so both sides taking heavy economic losses. It looks like the Hellion squad was dispatched up very easily. Can't say the same to those Mutalists, though, because um, there isn't that much anti-air here. Just upgradeless Marines. No, but actually, Stim is done. Uh, when, I, uh, when I say upgradeless, I do mean no shields, no armor, no weapons, but Stim is done, and that's really the one upgrade. If you're going to pick one out of any, that you do need to, to combat flying mutalisks. Uh, so here we go. It looks like the PF at the third was scouted out. Triple missile turret wall once again. Deja vu all over my body, man. Is this the 9 o'clock on Tal Uh So those mutas are going to fly away here. And a very, very close game to start things off. No real uh, huge losses by either side. I guess I could give the slight edge to the Zerg because he did uh, deflect the double banshee pretty easily he didn't lose that many drones to the two heli uh, to the hellion run by and uh, if we look at the workers kill tab while it looks like the terran is winning by killing 15 uh you know drones and the zerg has only killed off 13 you have to remember that in tvz killing off drones comes much easier than killing off scvs so that is actually much more i think in favor of the zerg player and that is reflected in the supply uh taking a glance up there 80 supply to 120 so the zerg is ahead by 40 right now and we'll see if lucira makes any mistakes this game to allow the terran back into it or not he's going to try to fly in with these mutas once again not a critical mass clump but i think it's just enough to be able to pick off these turrets we'll see if he commits or not those scvs are just I don't know what they're doing already there to repair wow 
I don't know how Supernova knew, knew those Mitas were going to come in, but he's, it looked like his SCVs were ready to repair, already in position, so good job by him, and that is going to be protected. Uh, at least uh, the airspace of the Terran will be protected, but what about these Marines? They're just stuck in the in middle of no man's land, no combat shields! They are going to go run behind the mineral fields at the gold. Not a bad spot at all, so good quick thinking on his feet by Supernova. That was kind of like one of those situations where you find yourself in a deep dark alley and, and the gangsters are coming for you and you immediately hop in the nearest trash can and hide away. So good job right there. Uh, it looks like he's going to be able to make a stand with the reinforcements that have just come in. Although the Zerk player is chasing after him and Supernova here might find himself getting surrounded. He is going to get surrounded but thankfully he's got more reinforcements. Good macro from him and I think he's going to be able to make a stand here pretty easily. Well done right there. Uh, not getting his army get caught, uh, getting caught out. Good, good job on the macro, and he's going to be able to reinforce the center position, which is so important on Antigua Shipyard and TVZ. You've got to hold down the center location, uh, where the Zelnaga towers really are. This is where the focal point is, and from here you can launch more attacks. You can also defend from multiple uh, attacks as well. And and I've said this time and time again, this is not a very good Terran map historically. I believe it's about. 55% uh, win rate internationally for Zerg, so not a good Terran map at all, and Supernova has his work cut out for him here. Meanwhile, the Zerg army still flying around with a decent number of Mutalisks. You can see that Marine number also starting to build up, 2-2 two, two weapons and armor finishing up, as well as plus one uh, weapons for the tanks. That's going to be a great upgrade for the Sea Shanks. Sea Shanks that get plus one weapons immediately cancel out that any armor upgrade from the, from the Zerglings immediately, so... Uh, they'll still be able to uh, pretty much splat the Zerglings. And uh, we can see flyer armor, uh, uh, flyer weapons actually being researched as well. And here we go, big attack from both sides as the Zerg goes in. I think the Zerg here may be a little bit forced. I don't know why Lucir is attacking, but perhaps he wants to protect the eggs of his new Banelings. But hey, if he's going to morph Banelings there, that's such a risky location. Might as well morph him in the back. But I guess that attack worked out okay for him. And now he's going to continue this attack right into the heart of the Terran homeworld. Uh, Supernova's got to be careful here. He's got to raise up the supply depots, bring that tank behind the wall. And he's got to siege up his tanks he's not sieging up his tanks right now and the Banelings are being allowed inside his base all those Banelings are detonating all around there's green goo everywhere a ton of SCVs hitting the floor uh, but at the end of the day only about five meters remain and it looks like somehow some way Supernova survives that attack with just a barely uh, manageable amount of Marines intact it's like four or five left standing and now the reinforcements starting to arrive so uh, you know at the end of that battle all things considered I think Lucira went in there with the intention of doing as much damage as possible the nice thing here there's two things kind of at play a he traded effectively I think both armies pretty much traded poof both armies disappeared B even if he hadn't been able to trade effectively let's say he lost more than he actually killed at least it was over the Terran side of things so if something did go wrong it would take travel time for the Terran army to come back and make a counterattack. so you know it, it was a calculated attack it was a he might come out way ahead he might uh, come out behind but at the least it's not going to be in the middle of the map it's on his side Looks like we do have a new command center coming up for Supernova, looking to go to the fourth. But meanwhile, there are some Mutalisks trying to fly in for our Zerg player, Lucira. He's going to try to get some damage in here. The SCVs are going to have to scurry away, but that does leave the Supply Depots vulnerable to attack. Lucira is going to be able to pick that up, and it's a small victory, but a victory nevertheless. And I don't know why Supernova is not bringing some of his Marines back to defend against this. He's actually moving out across the map with a huge attack force. Meanwhile, also dropping behind the Zerg. Uh, soon to be Hive, and Supernova here could do some serious damage. The spawning pool is in danger of going down, but uh, will these Mutas be able to hold on or not? I don't think so, and the Zerglings <laughs> unmorphing from their Banelings state to try to attack the Marines, and the Marines are going to live out. Meanwhile, some Marines also coming back to deflect the Muta Harass, and meanwhile, this attack is still going on. It's actually being able to push onto the creep now. What an insane game this is. The spawning pool was saved. Uh, thankfully for Lucira, if he had lost that pull, that would have been a devastating, devastating blow. And of course, Supernova also able to save, uh, well, he wasn't able to save the Supply Depot. So he is actually capped right now at 132 to 132. And maybe that was more of a blow than I actually thought it was. He's going to have to build a lot more depots now to clear that cap space. Big attack potentially here as there is a new expansion looking to get set up at the 9 o'clock 
Although Supernova has something to say about that. He's got plenty of tanks in the middle of the map. Has the high ground as well, which is huge on Antigua Shipyard. He wants to take out some of that Creepers. Sends four Marines over to the 9 o'clock to take that out. Same situation as Tower of Altar. Look at this. Osiro going for the backstab. He knows all the forces were in the middle. And he goes for the juggler once again. All the SCVs in trouble. All the production in trouble as well. And uh, uh, Supernova is going to have to get back home right now. He's losing so many SCVs. 48, 51, 55, 60. It's going through the roof right now. And all the SCVs at the natural just getting ransacked. As well as the ones in the main. Oh my god. His economy just got absolutely obliterated. 75, 76 workers killed. And he's only down to 25 right now that's barely enough to saturate one base so essentially he just lost two bases worth of scvs he was able to come back home and clean up but there's still zerglings burrowed underneath the natural command center and this is one of those games where things were going great things were going great and then boom just like that you get backstabbed by the Zerg and things just fall apart. Same situation like Tauterim Altar, his army was not in position as this game and really it just came down to not walling off. Why didn't he have a wall set up of some sort at this front door that would have protected him? A wall likewise here would have been safe as well, although he did have a planetary fortress. But gosh, now he is in so much trouble. I don't know what he's going to do. Supernova could just be out of this game. He's going to have one last ditch attempt on his hands here. And that's with all of his tanks tanks and marines. Try to make something happen. Forget the Zerglings in his base. It's, it's, it's too late to save his base now. There's three Broodlords coming out as well. So he's got to make this attack happen before the Broodlords come into play. And everybody knows how deadly Broodlords can be. There's not even any Vikings in the field right now. So I think the conclusion might be able to be drawn up now. I think Supernova just lost this game. Uh, Lucira with a well-timed, very good, coordinated strike, uh, just use, utilizing Zerg mobility to to the fullest and, and doing a great job at that. The backstabs really got him uh, out of two sticky situations and it looks like he's going to be able to clean up this minute that drop pretty easily. Nice job right there. As uh, we look back over to the Terran side of things, and uh, things are looking just dilapidated, drawn down, and uh, really the building is burning. I guess there's not too many buildings burning. The fire department was called in, but uh, there's not much left to work with here for Supernova. And now he's going to try to make an attack down at the bottom right hand corner. It looks like he will be able to kill off one more hatchery. So not bad at all, but look at this. The Broodlords have arrived. The final level of the Zerg artillery is here. And uh, I don't know, man. A Thor and a Planetary Fortress is not the most well equipped to deal with this. So, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like the Zerg is going to be able to take this down here pretty easily. Um, there is a small pocket of resistance here with the Marines. Surprises, Zerglings have not made a uh, a cameo appearance here uh, at the end of the game. But uh, nevertheless, the Broodlords are actually in trouble here. Some Marines have gotten underneath them, and oh, transfuse at the very last second. Very nice transfuses by Super or by Lucira. Meanwhile, oh, there's a drop coming in at the Zerg third, but that drop was cleaned up and dispatched up very easily. These tanks are, oh my God, so vulnerable right now. Meanwhile, the PF is starting to drop in HP. Oh. Well, so smart by Supernova, to, or not Supernova, by Lucira to bring some queens here to help transfuse the group boards. That's some high level Zerg stuff right there. And uh, I think this is going to be all she wrote. Drone sound just starting to main art their way over to the left. The PF is on fire. Call in the fire department. Bring it in. No, it's not going to be enough. The PF is going to go down. And finally, the first Vikings making their appearance on the field, but it is too late for them. And Transfuse is going down to keep the Zerg air units alive. Lucira, I think, ladies and gentlemen, is your winner for this best of three set, the final IPL4 qualifier game that I will be casting. And uh, I'm going to be going off to Vegas in a couple of hours. So excited. Hope I see you guys there. The level of play is this good in a qualifier match. Imagine how good it's going to be on the stage. Hopefully you guys all tune in once again for the last time. The links are justin.tv forward slash IGN Pro League or twitch.tv forward slash IGN Pro League. They all start at Friday at 10 a.m. I hope I see you guys there. And this has been an amazing, an amazing set of games. I am truly uh, honored to be able to cast these for you guys. And... Um, I guess that's about it. Uh, I'll see you guys after Vegas. When I come back, I'll have more StarCraft 2 content. I also want to maybe dabble a little bit in some new video games as well. Um, 
But that's about it. Uh, I'll see you guys around. Make sure to subscribe to me on YouTube. I'm at youtube.com slash hdstarcraft. I am also at Facebook and Twitter. And uh, thanks for all the support, guys. I'll see you guys soon. HD, signing out.